Hi, my name is Lisa Itkonen, and I'm a principal planner and the planning team lead at the Community Planning Association of Southwest Idaho, or COMPASS. And I will introduce the draft Communities in Motion 2050 plan and ask for your feedback on it. I will talk about who COMPASS is, what the Long Range Transportation Plan is and what's in it, and finally, how you can be involved and comment on the draft plan. So who is COMPASS? As the long name says, COMPASS is an association of governments that plans for the future of Ada and Canyon counties. COMPASS vision is to be the forum for regional collaboration in Southwest Idaho that helps maintain a healthy and economically vibrant region, offering people choices in how and where they live, work, play, and travel. We have four roles to fulfill that vision. We develop regional plans for Ada and Canyon counties. We then help implement projects to advance regional goals, mainly by securing financial resources to do that. We also are the regional source of data and expertise in geographic information systems or GIS, demographics, modeling, and so on. And we facilitate by bringing stakeholders together, but also by providing a forum for public to provide input into the regional planning and decision-making. Today, I will focus on the planning role with a look at the region's long-range transportation plan, which is our primary planning product. Community motion is the long-range transportation plan for Ada and Canyon counties, and it is required for areas such as the Treasure Valley with over 50,000 people to receive federal transportation dollars. It's a plan that looks out at least 20 years into the future, and it plans for a multimodal transportation system to meet the needs of the forecasted growth by that horizon year. And multimodal here means that it includes roadways, transit, active transportation, or walking and biking, as well as freight. The plan is fiscally constrained, and that means that we need to know what we can reasonably expect to be able to pay, because we can only show those projects as funded in the plan. And then of course, Public and agency involvement and feedback are important throughout the plan development. I will review the three surveys that we conducted to inform Community Motion 2050, and then we'll talk more about the public comment opportunity for this draft plan. We also then update this plan every four years. The current plan is called Community Motion 2042.0, and it was adopted in 2018. It plans to the year 2040, and it is a completely online plan. Since we update this plan every four years, Community Motion 2050 is due for the Compass Board action this December, and it will also be an online plan. Community Motion 2050, or CIM 2050, has been developed in three stages, explore, choose, and prioritize. And each builds upon the previous and has included member agency input throughout the process, as well as several public involvement opportunities. We are now accepting public comments on the draft plan. The first stage, Explore, was from 2019 to early 2020. And this included the population forecast, or as we call it, the control total of 1,075,000 people by 2050 in the two counties. We also hosted discussion groups to help refine certain topic areas such as safety, travel and tourism, and economic development. And we conducted the first survey in the fall of 2019 and then used this high-level public involvement to begin to help shape the goals and targets for the plan. The first A Lot Can Change in 30 Years survey had over 3,700 respondents. Those results and the three discussion groups provided input into what residents want the future to look like, such as what type of housing do they want, how do they want to get around with technologies, what technologies will they embrace or not, and we use this information to begin to develop a vision for the future and the plan goals. We combined what we heard from the survey with the growth forecast of just under 1.1 million people by 2050 to develop four scenarios of what that future could look like. Those four distinct growth and transportation scenarios were called 
let it be, take it to ride, penny lane, and come together. That led to the second phase, choose, from spring of 2020 to late 2021. Also included in this phase were the complete network policy and selection of a locally favored high capacity transit option. We conducted the second survey the summer of 2020 to ask about those four scenarios and important values. We had over 3,100 participants in that survey. The values led to four goal areas, safety, convenience, quality of life, and economic vitality. There are also 18 objectives that, that, that describe these goals. We then established performance measures and targets to use to prioritize projects and measure success. Feedback on the values and those four scenarios led to the final growth scenario for the region, the Community Motion 25th Division. And this really is the backbone of the plan. It forecasts and describes what the valley will look like in 2050, how many people and jobs and where they are. And that information was used to determine transportation needs. The complete network policy provides direction to support and help implement that community motion vision and goals. And it provides a balance for all users. So bicyclists, pedestrians, auto, freight, bus, etc., and a transportation system that serves all users. But all roads are not designed to be all things to all people. This is not a one-size-fits-all policy, but different roads focus on different types of use based on likely users, the context of surrounding areas, parallel routes, and potential destinations. Since Communities in Motion is about the growth and a transportation system that meets the future needs, and in the first two surveys, people seem to support and want more and better transit, we conducted a third survey in early 2021, specifically about transit needs and preferences. That survey got over 11,700 respondents. Based on the survey results and previous studies, Compass Board approved a regional rail on the Boise cutoff as a locally favored option for high capacity transit. It was the best fit for alignment and mode from the option study and based on the analysis of the survey results. We would also need to build a bus system needed to support this type of high capacity transit service. And this led us to the final step of determining future transportation funding and needs, analyzing strategies to address those needs using Compass congestion management process, analyzing the projects based on needs and how potential strategies help address community emotion goals, and then using all of that information to identify and prioritize funded and unfunded transportation projects and needs. The plan lists funded capital projects on Interstate 84, state highways and principal arterials, and capital projects with federal funds. It has short-term funded or already budgeted projects, as well as long-term funded capital projects out to 2050. State and local roadway projects needed by 2030 went through additional technical analysis, scoring, and a prioritization process, so we would address the more immediate needs first, both on state highways and the local system. In addition to those priorities, unfunded public transportation projects and regional pathways were prioritized by those work groups, and then the remaining unfunded roadway projects and studies are listed, but those were not prioritized. To summarize, this plan, it is planning for a complete transportation system to meet the needs of 1,075,000 people by 2050. It identifies project priorities and funded projects as well as unfunded needs, and it includes goals and implementation strategies to reach the Community Motion 2050 vision. You may be thinking, how can I be involved? You've already been involved if you participated in the surveys. You can also subscribe to our email list, either from the website or you can send us an email and you can follow us on social media. And you can be involved this fall by providing comments on the draft plan. Like I said, this is an online plan and you can get there from the Compass website. 
The technical documents will be in the background and you can read them for more details. The public comment period is from September 16 through October 16. All materials are online, including comment forms, fact sheets, and so on. You can also request a hard copy of the materials if you'd prefer to have that. And we will have two open houses, the first on September 29th in the Nampa Public Library, and the second on October 5th in the Boise Public Library at Hillcrest. We'd love to see you there and answer your questions in person. Then in late October into November, we will incorporate the feedback from the public and get the draft plan ready for our technical committee's recommendation in November and the Compass Board's action in December. Thank you for your interest. You can leave questions in the comment section below or on social media, but your comments on the draft plan need to be submitted on the comment form that you can find on the website. Thank you again. I look forward to your feedback.